What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington, and I'm here with my review for episode eight of Doom Patrol on the DC Universe. Now, if you have not seen it yet, you already know it will be spoilers, and we're going to have a great time because I brought back my great intellectual, wonderful friend, Mr. Winston A. Marshall. How are you, sir? Like, you know what? I thought I would like it if you were nice to me for once. That shit pissed me off more because I feel like you'd be a sarcastic than a motherfucker, dog. I know. I appreciate you here. I, I appreciate what you do and having you here. You don't have to lie, nigga. I'm not lying. I talked to your nigga Wallace before this. I, he told me you were going to come in here and lie, I'm nigga. Not, I'm sitting there showing you how appreciative I am of what you do and all the contributions you make to this. Then I am then I am great. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't ask. I just was telling. Here we go. <laughs> here we fucking go. This motherfucker can't even do right. Just try to get a nigga compliment and he want I don't believe you. I think you lying. I don't do well. You believe you be the big Fuck out of here. Uh, I, I don't know what I was to say. By the way, this nigga's arms aren't really green if you're looking. <laughs> nigga, I'm just showing you perfection. This is what perfection look like, dog. You wouldn't understand that because I'm pretty sure you don't watch Dragon Ball anything, if I'm uh, correct. I do, but also, your perfection looks like you just got on a medium Chinese uh, Speedo shirt, nigga. Anyway. Hey, man, look, they say dress for the job you want, right? So I'm dressing for the job I want. Perfection slash trying to trim down. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we working on it. This motherfucking job he wants is mascot boy in marathons. Anyway. <sighs> Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You gonna say the serenity prayer, nigga? Nigga, that's what this tattoo is about. Next time when I'm out, I'll show it later. It's fine. So, nigga, I, so this right tattoo now. about is cup. Hey, man. <laughs> first of all, we look. So when you look at every episode of Doom Patrol, we talk about this every week. It's a different name, and I saw Danny Patrol, and I didn't think shit about it. And then all of a sudden, we see in the beginning, a black dude walk through the forest with an earpiece on, which means he's a government dude. We hear his name being called like Agent Wilson. And we're like, okay, cool. But then he walk into a town and you just see the shit. And I'm like, Danny Street. And this nigga out of nowhere goes, <laughs> oh, 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 Danny the Street. It's Danny, Danny, Danny the Street, nigga. Which if you don't know, Danny the Street is a legit DC Comics Doom Patrol character. Danny the Street is a living, sentient Understanding intelligible street that literally can, can manipulate teleport. it can teleport manipulate anything. It is a sentient fucking, fucking street. street. It's incredible. And so the fucking agent, the black dude, he's around there with the earpiece. He looking at everybody all happy and free. Everybody, you know, what I'm saying, welcome to us as a sign. Say, you know, what I'm saying, where you from? You know, what I'm saying, how you doing? He don't know what the fuck is going on because I ain't gonna lie. If I was him, I'd be like. What did I drink or smoke <laughs> before I went on duty? Who did spiked my drink, Jesus? I'm seeing shit. The streets are talking to me. And then I see perpet uh, Peeping Tom's Perpetual Cabaret. And I was like, I literally told this nigga. That was the funniest shit. Is the minute he saw that, and then like later on in the episode, we go into the cabaret. It's like, we're going to see some titties. Titties, titties, titties. <laughs> Get them titties in here. Why, 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 would we, why would you think we wouldn't see no titties? Remember, we ain't seen no real titties since episode one. I want more titties. That's, and I, I'm not going to lie. For half a second, I thought that's exactly what was going to happen. But I was bad for saying it and thinking it out loud. What you're saying. It's because, like, you know how the more you, like, they say what? You, you can't just, like, snatch something. You got to, like, have an open palm. The minute you start screaming titties, 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 that's like closing your fist. Ain't no titties coming in your hand. But my dick will go in my hand if there was titties. I'm not saying that would have happened with him in this situation we're watching it. I'm just letting him know later, like, it had been my spank bank. Like, that just really sounded disgusting. <laughs> like, my fist would be balled up like the gauntlet in that. <laughs> I, I feel bad for your dick. You just be snapping out of existence, don't you? He's talking about this. This come off? They no, no do it, it don't come off. It, it don't come, come off. It's man, fine. took a long time to balance that shit on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I tried to get it even as level as possible. because your hand is closed shut, right? So you had to do it one-handed. Is that the problem? You, you got carpal tunnel, nigga? You look like you like, beat off poodles with that hand, nigga. Beat off poodles? He's like, <laughs> I mean, my shit is the size of a poodle, if that's what you're talking about. 
Well, this whole episode review, God. this review just got weird as fuck. Got really weird. I mean, part of the problem is, to be honest with you, we normally do this in the middle of the day, and because <laughs> of scheduling, it's like almost midnight. It's eleven twenty-three in the p.m. as we record this for y'all. So niggas are delirious right now. Just a little bit. Not to mention the fact before he came over to record and watch the episode, I had a nice shot of espresso. So I'm half delirious and half fucking wired. But anyway, <laughs> so Larry is having nightmares again as normal. I think Larry just needed to tell people, look, I was sucking dick in the Air Force, and because I was sucking dick in the Air Force, I couldn't be the person I wanted to be, and I had a family. Hey, man, look, 2019. I'm just saying, he 2019. Needs to, but he needs to openly just say, look, I love, because he did say last episode, I love the dude. And I think he has to come to terms that he was sucking dick in the Air Force, and then kissing his wife with the mouth he was sucking dick in the Air Force with. Yeah, like again, it's, it's 2019. So a lot of people are accepting this stuff. So like, if you're gonna do that, you should at least tell your wife. But again, you have to remember this was, was like the 50s. 50s. None of that was say, acceptable. Right, it wasn't acceptable. But now it's like you're 60 years past that. You should be able to. I get the what the ramifications. But, like, you have to uh, come to accept it and come to terms but with I, it. But I think it's like most things in life, man. Like, when you have a demon you've been burdened with the entirety of your life, it's very hard to ultimately come to terms with it. So I actually have, like, a friend I play dodgeball with who only came out at, like, 40-something. And he was engaged to a woman who turned out to be a lesbian. It's a whole long story. That's so weird. You know why I say it's weird? Because I've heard of that more frequently than I normally would have ever heard of that. About a gay man and a lesbian woman getting yeah, together. Yeah, they, they'll be yeah. together in a relationship, yeah. and then one comes out, and the other comes out, whether it's the guy first or the woman first. I think because part of it is, again, if deep down you know who you are as a person, then, like, you put yourself sometimes subconsciously in situations that won't work out so yeah. that you can like kind of ultimately get to where you need to go. Anyway, my point is... Well, I want to tell you something. Yeah, uh, go, 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 go I want to come ahead. and tell you something yeah, yeah. for the first time here on this record. Uh, Winston, huh. I'm vegan-ish. Oh, I can't even do this. <laughs> like, I gotta... I gotta <laughs> fuck you, Vegan nigga. Vegan-ish. <sighs> That's like when my girl told me she was flexitarian. Yo, his girl... I'm not going to say that on this review. Please don't. Because she watches these. Your girl is dope. Shout she out, is dope, though. She's dope. Shout out to Kristen. What's up, Look, baby? Kristen, you dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kristen, if you got some fine-ass friends like you, please send them my way. Should have shawty swing, ma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're delirious to the motherfucker in this bitch. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. Y'all niggas better be appreciative of the things we do for you. Oh. So, the phone rings in doom. <laughs> And Doom Manor. Rita picks it up and it sounds like Jane, but it's not Jane. It's Karen. Of course, <coughs> of course Karen gonna be the most basic white bitch you've ever seen in your Karen life. Is, Karen's not really a basic white bitch. Karen is the Betty Crocker biscuit making bitch. Karen's the chick that's married to a white dude in the suburbs with all day she dream about black dick. Karen, I, Karen, if, if for anybody that's watched Legally Blonde before, Karen is Elle Woods if she wasn't intelligent. Because that's that, that that's the weird mythology they do in that movie. It's fine. I, you probably haven't seen the movie before. I think the movie's hilarious. But the point is, is that Elle Woods is like, even though she's, it's fine. Elle Woods is very, very intelligent, but she plays like this basic sorority girl. Imagine all the intelligence is gone. Because all Karen is, she's obsessed with 90s rom-coms. And so she keeps finding this dude named Doug. And every time Karen comes out, which is very rare, but every time Karen comes out, she goes and finds Doug, makes him fall in love with him, and tries to, like, run off together. Dude, are you done? 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 I was about to explain the movie. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? If you want to get crazy... I'm not going to do that again. I use that for the schmo now. So we also... <laughs> I'm choking this shit. <laughs> I'm keeping all this shit. This video nigga talk. <laughs> this is gonna be the funniest one. Everybody gonna think we like stoned or some shit in this, bro. We just really just on it, one. Or exhausted. Just so tired. <laughs> so so then we talk about we find out about with Larry, we find out that Darren Jones is coming after Danny. You know saying Danny Street. Cause Vic is there. Vic don't know what the fuck going on. First of all, I think Vic has an identity crisis. He don't know if he robot, if he human, if he black, if he himself. He got a lot of issues he need to deal with. I really think they need to find a female cyborg and let Vic get laid. Cause that look like his problem. And I know you wonder, Jay, why the fuck you talking about just sex in the Doom Patrol review? And look, it's sex always in these reviews, okay? I thought Elliot was gonna say he wanted to taste some vagina cause vaginas are delicious. If Pussy Eden was an Olympic event, I'd get a platinum medal. Uh, we saw titties in the first episode. My nigga said a platinum. So you just gonna skip over gold, nigga. You getting the platinum. Oh, Lord. 
Cole say, can you see? No, 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 no. We don't do that shit oh, yeah. right here, bro. It's, Yo, I, oh. Lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. I just remember you said your roommates are asleep, so we probably shut the fuck up. Yeah, we, yeah well, I'm gonna wake up a well, white woman sing and lift every voice and sing. <laughs> she gonna be confused. <laughs> this fuck is going <laughs> She gonna get her own care to come in here and whoop our ass, nigga. You know what? Speaking of which, what we're talking about, I, if a woman ever asks me, how good do you really actually eat pussy? I'm going to send her a meme that says, them calling me Bushmaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. Why Why did my girl send me a meme today uh, where someone put, someone uses a tender uh, hit pickup line? They said, girl, I want to treat you like an Oreo. Open you up and eat the good shit in the middle. That could be taken way different ways, though. Like, Yeah, I know. Like, but I was like, that's creative. That's creative. But you what know? if that creamy shit ain't really the creamy shit you Oh, wanted? no. So listen. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so there's a red menace that Derrick Jones is looking for, basically. And he works for the Bureau of Normalcy, which clearly ain't no shit normal about this right now. But he wants, because he knows Dan, something's up with Danny. He doesn't know exactly what Danny is. He just knows Danny Street is something weird about it. You know, it's not, it just pops up, it's gone. It keeps going. It can move around at a moment's notice. So he's trying to find that. But also, while Cliff... So Cliff goes with Rita to try to get Karen, a.k.a. Jane, to come back. Cliff on the porch, because Karen don't want him around for a minute. A short little black shorty come up, right? Dressed in the cardboard. Go ahead. Looking like a robot. He goes, oh, what's good? What's good? Hits him with the... Boom, boom, boom. boom. And then all of a sudden, Cliff was like... Oh, oh, for real? I see you flash dance 87 times. This is his robot dance. He, go, he points to his watch, does like this. My, like, he is a robot and he's losing dancing to the robot. And so he said that, and I told him, I was like, yeah, because Shorty's black. He got rhythm naturally. Cliff is still a white dude. Don't mean just because he's a robot, he got rhythm. But, but what's confusing about that is every one of his movements throughout this show has was, been super robotic. Until and the he minute danced. he has to dance, all of a sudden it's fluid as fuck, mm -hmm. and not in a good way. <laughs> I don't understand. So we find out that the drag queen that keeps seeing, everybody keeps seeing in uh, the cabaret place, her name is Morley Corrupt. Which is so a dope ass name. He by thinks Mora Lee. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. I always knew it was Morley Corrupt. I it wasn't until it was said a couple times because you laughed when you heard it that I was like, oh, did you hear Mora Lee as in like Mora? L E E, no. and then I realized that no, that's not what you were laughing about. You were just laughing at the name, and I was like, "It's not funny. It's just a dope name." But you know, whatever, it's fine. It's you know, to be trying to kill my vibe worse than a Kendrick Lamar track. Anyway, D they kill your vibe. They don't kill point? my vibe. I'm aware, but it doesn't. That's the whole point: is don't kill the vibe. Like that. That was a bad joke. Like you should just do better. I don't care if it's late. I don't care if you're working on espresso. I don't care what the fuck's going on. Just be better, man. I'm supposed to be here to push you. That's the point. It's for me to push you. Like, again, all this perfection, Gohan, is to try and bring out your inner power so you can go Super Saiyan 2, nigga, and stop being this regular-ass Super Saiyan nigga. What's the point of you being in all the gym if you just going to sit here and not power up, nigga? Like, you need to ha, you know what I'm saying? Like, do better. Anyway, so we find out that Morally Corrupt is actually the former Agent Wilson. And so Danny the Street, what's so beautiful about it is that Danny just allows people to be them. There's no, the, like, people, queer people, whatever that's going on there, they all just live there happily. They can hide away from any sort of people that are hunting them, people that are persecuting them, anything like that. And it, that's what's so cool about this episode is that you find out that Danny is actually working first of as all, a savior. Well, first of all... When they try to figure out, when Vic and Larry try to figure out about Danny, Morley Corrupt says Danny is a sentient, intelligent, teleporting, gender queer street. Vic is like, wait, what? Huh? Yeah. Well, Even follows it up by saying the, that Danny's pro, 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 pronoun, preferred pronouns are non-binary. Are non-binary. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then Vic is still like, huh? So Morley Corrupt says, let me explain it to you better. One zero one zero one zero. You know, the best thing, the only bad thing that would have made this episode a little bit better was if Bender Bending Rodriguez was in it. <laughs> Bite my 
my shiny metal ass. <laughs> like, why am I so, I'm so loco. So basically, they find out, toward, we get towards the end, and they find out that uh, Darren Jones has found out what Danny Street is. So everybody's like going to run and hide. And Danny was like, morally corrupt, was telling Danny, look, as soon as I got him clear, jump. Go what you got to do. Danny's like, fuck you. We fighting this bitch. We ain't running no more. Gang, gang. And so then... <laughs> <laughs> gang, gang. Then again, then again, then again, then again, then again, then again, then again. I don't know if you really corrupt fucking up these white boys trying to fuck up the game. I wasn't that bad. I'm very tired. <laughs> 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 so morally corrupt runs up on Darren Jones and then you know Darren Jones is like who the fuck are you you fucking freak and they tell who he really is and then he tries to hit him and morally corrupt says I thought your mama told you wasn't nice to hit a lady and proceeds to whoop the whoop piss out of Darren Jones ass and the best part too is cause the whole community comes out so when Darren kind of falls back they throw his ass back in to get kicked by morally in the face which all is, over again which is basically bro. some shit that happens in a real street fight in the hood like no get your bitch ass back in yeah. You get shit. your lickings. Get your licks in. Also, so Karen is still trying to marry Doug. She's almost there. Cliff, she tries to hypnotize Cliff, but Cliff don't have real fucking eyes. So it don't work. You're like, the fuck is going on? <laughs> so it gets to the point. She tried, you know what I'm saying? She like, yo, leave me the fuck alone. Cliff like, yo, you fucking going with me. Gets pushed down. All of a sudden, Karen turns into hammerhead and tosses the fuck out of Cliff. Then... Karen gets over dead, over Doug, like, baby, I love you, blah, 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 and then turns back to Hammerhead. Hammerhead about to stab him. About to shake this motherfucker like a vampire. Which, by the way, I got to go back to something earlier. Mm. So when Rita and uh, Karen had a discussion, Mm. Karen turned into Hammerhead. Hammerhead said, get me the fuck out of here. If I catch this chub anywhere near my bush, I'm going to kill him. And this motherfucker said, if I get fucked, you get fucked. Wow. So does that mean like Jane's a virgin? No, it's not. It's not. But that's another CW show. That is a di- completely different CW show, which we're about to do a spinoff. I don't know if you heard about. I know, that. like yeah, Jane, so. the, Jane the sex album. <laughs> what? No, no, all right. <laughs> but I no man. I don't. I don't think that it's specifically that Jane's a virgin. I think that she just hates Doug. Everybody but Karen hates Doug. Yeah. So, because remember, there she has personalities that we haven't seen yet that are sex addicts and all sorts of shit. So that's so that's. By the way. Hmm. With a hair like that, would you like to be the chick that's a sex addict and a multiple personality? Only with hair like that, though. I'm talking about your hair. Excuse me? I'm so confused. Well, because your hair says you'd fuck anything. Now... (laughs) (laughs) Nah, my hair says, nigga, I'm just tired of fucking picking my shit out. That's what that shit says. That's Oh, you're... All right, as someone who shaves his head by choice, I'd like to go on the record. It's a lot of work. You're <laughs> At like every two, three days, right? Yeah, but otherwise it's... you look like a broke chia pet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made myself laugh, nigga. God damn. Actually, it's not a broke chia pet. I look like I licked the windows on the short yellow school bus. Mm, that's so sad. <laughs> that's so sad. <laughs> but. So, yeah, so then, you know, Jane, all of a sudden, they have to fight because, like, Hammerhead was finna stab this motherfucker. She turned back to Jane. I mean, she turned back to Karen. Karen was like, I'm so sorry. And all of a sudden, Karen just shuts the fuck down. Like, and then we finally see our first trip inside the underground. This is the personality where all of Jane's personalities live. And we see the tracks. Wait, did I just squeak and breathe? Yes. I said, what is that wheeze? Why did I sound like I got a little squishy toy duck in my thing? I heard a whack. It, it happens. I just, oh. I just, I just ignored it because I was just like, "That's yeah, fine." Sometimes we just make weird noises. No, it just caught me off guard. Couple times, squeeze. <laughs> Texas A&M University. Because <laughs> <laughs> they got a coffee. Keep doing it. All right. So Jane. So all of a sudden, we don't see, but something is dragging Karen down the underground. The problem is, when somebody's dragging, there's nobody going up, so there's no personality at the forefront of the body. And so, what is Jane is just sitting there like this, just eyes open and shit. And Cliff, the, Cliff and Rita like, Jane, hello, hello. <laughs> what the fuck is and that was there? It. You know, it was interesting because we've now got the <coughs> episode. I thought that it was pretty cool because the imagery that they put, it felt very reminiscent of the sunken place and get out. Like, if you notice when she gets dragged down, yeah. it reminds me a lot of... Uh, 
of Chris, like, you know, when he first gets hypnotized, just yeah. screaming and trying to whatever as he's getting pulled down. That's what it kind of reminded me of, which I thought was pretty cool imagery for them to to do that. It, wor- it worked. You know what? Again, every episode is a different level of uniqueness and weirdness. And this is never, this isn't no different. Of course, we got a living street. A living street. I mean, Danny the Street, like I said, for anybody that watches this Down, my boy Eric Zipper's been warning me about this shit for a while. He's like, just wait, let me know when Danny the Street, a sentient street comes in and I will be watching the show from that point forward. And Danny the Street comes in in episode eight, which we just talked about. So, so I'm going to give you my thoughts. If I do a scale of one to five, five being the highest, one being the lowest, I don't know why you would think it's any other way. I would have to give this episode a five. The reason being, Danny the Street is an essential part of the episode and it doesn't look dumb. It sounds weird in itself to hear that a street is alive, but it works. Also, the social things that we deal with, the social issues that are brought into the episode as well, and how it's different things about the episode that all come together and work. I'm loving that. And the fact that the street is scared of shit of Mr. Nobody was like, fuck that. You figure out where now it is on your own. Like, we don't do this. I'm trying to protect my fuckers. So I give it a five, man. Winston, what do you give me? I got to give it a 69 just because it was like a very like sex positive, gender positive, queer positive episode. And I feel like or or I might give it a I might give it a, a, a rainbow out of five. Like it just genuinely is a very like socially amazing episode i feel like that shit is like hella hella dope and that's the one thing that i do appreciate is that this show has a tendency to look at what self-identity means what what your identity to other people means etc it explores it every single time and in this particular case it explored what it's like for someone who doesn't feel like they can be themselves and what does that mean and what does that fight in that persecution mean so i thought it was super dope man I, i really love what they're doing with this show you couldn't just say one to five by itself, huh? Are you really gonna knock my my positive ass rating right now? Come on now, like. Just, okay, so just just let it happen. Uh, it, it fucking did already. There's nothing we can do about it. So go ahead and tell the people how they can waste their time and follow you on social media. God, you are fucking rude. Uh, you can follow me, the Swaggy Blur, T H E S W A G G Y. I must be tired because I heard the sweaty blur. I was like, that is disgusting. <laughs> That's pretty gross. Let me try that again. Just because your ass is clearly hard of hearing. The Swaggy Blurred. T-H-E-S-W-A-G-G-Y-B-L-E-R-D on all social medias. He had to respell it slowly for himself. We did fuck it up. You know, he was like S W A G. All of them saying is that, oh my, all of them I'm saying, Jesus, the vodka and the pre-workout are making a potent mix Yo, right I now. Think, and I'm starting uh, to get tired. I forgot we had a shot of vodka before this started. So I had vodka, coffee, and now I'm sitting around here talking about some damn cartoon TV show. It's not even a cartoon. What the fuck? Comic books. Look, I'm at Twitter and Instagram, Mr. J. Washington, as always. M-R-J-A-Y-W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. Ha! Gotcha. Well done. You didn't Uh, tell them to try and spell Washington on their own for once. (laughs) (laughs) Because I think you're so much nicer when you're delirious. (laughs) Like when you're not sharp, all of a sudden, like you just you're just the nicest person in the world. Jesus, you're like Karen. <laughs> yes, I'm like Karen. I love everybody. Uh, join the Supervillain Squad on Patreon. I'll spread all of my love all over you. Gross. Patreon. Jesus. My roommate told me I should show my dick on my Patreon. You and should I was, not. I was like, I'm not doing that. They don't pay enough for that. Now, somebody, if you become a fifty dollar patron, man or woman, you get the dick pic because <laughs> you've earned it. Listen, <laughs> drop fifty. So that's what your dick is worth, fifty dollars. At the rate I need to pay rent, yes, it is. Oh my god. <laughs> This is the end. Can you wrap it up, please? I need to go home and just be quiet and just cry. I just need to fucking cry, nigga. Check out the man's like, fuck <laughs> Yo, you got a dope guest this week, too. Y'all should definitely watch the Yo, the this Tide week, podcast. this episode of the Mad Tight Podcast, I'm, I'm honored to have Van Lathan from TMZ on there, man. We had a dope-ass nerdy discussion. We even got into a hot debate two minutes into the episode. So y'all are definitely going to want to check that out, man. I'll be back with this nigga here next week, probably, I'm sure. Yeah, because I'll be at Star Wars Celebration, so we got to do it early again. Uh, I'll holler at y'all later. I'll hopefully get some sleep. I'm out of here. Take care. Uh, Revolution. See, you thought I was going to say peace, Revolution.
black power. This nigga's throwing hands at my camera. Nigga, Kamehameha, nigga. It's Kamehameha. I'm very aware, but you, 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 how you say it quickly? <laughs> you are so rude. <laughs> <laughs>